Welcome to our channel. In this video we will review some facts about Hispanic culture. But before we start, please like this video and subscribe to our channel for future updates. Hispanic culture, according to historians, began during the Age of Exploration. Europeans started traveling by water to find trade routes, spices, glory, and religion. The Spanish, Dutch, and French are just a few instances of countries that have journeyed far from home to achieve various aims. Spaniards, in particular, travel to establish towns in order to preach Christianity. Spreading the message of God is a noble endeavor. Unfortunately, the Spaniards used cruel techniques and regarded many of the indigenous in the areas they visited as uncivilized. The truth is that the people they encountered in these countries had various customs, cultures, and purposes for their own technology. However, the Europeans saw them as savages in need of assistance. Christopher Columbus, a great explorer, intended to use boats to locate a passage to Asia. Instead, he accelerated the control of other countries. Contrary to popular opinion, Christopher Columbus failed in every endeavor he attempted. Mismanagement of the territories they claimed resulted in persistent local insurrection. Columbus's actions upset Queen Isabella when he handed 500 slaves. She expressly instructs him not to harm her subjects. Columbus, unfortunately, never learns from his mistakes. Columbus dies impoverished, robbed of his title, but with a legacy. He alters the course of history by instilling Spanish culture in numerous countries. People from the enslaved countries would subsequently be referred to as Hispanic. People nowadays are proud of their Hispanic heritage. The tremendous diversity in each country influenced by Spain has become a knowledge minefield. It will be daunting to learn about all of them at once. So, to get you started, here are a few facts about Hispanic culture. Hispanic is an ethnic group. Many people are unaware that the term Spanish does not refer to race. The term Spanish refers only to nationality and language. Hispanics are individuals who have been affected by Spanish culture. This is because the term Hispanic refers to Spanish cultures, customs, values, language, and beliefs. Hispanic ethnicity can be found in people from countries other than Spain. Mexico, Honduras, Uruguay, Puerto Rico, Panama, Venezuela, Nicaragua, El Salvador, Equatorial Guinea, Costa Rica, Colombia, Chile, Guatemala, Bolivia, and Ecuador are Hispanic majority countries. Quinceaneras are celebrated by Hispanic and Latino families. The 15th birthday of a girl is significant in Hispanic and Latino culture. The young girl's parents and family introduce her to the mature Quinceanera event known as Quinceaira. Quinceaneras, one of the most well-known Hispanic customs around the world, is a combination of two Spanish words, quince, which means 15, and anos, which means year. Quinceaneras are traditionally used to indicate that a girl is ready for marriage with social and familial responsibilities in mind. When commemorating Quinceaneras, people first attend a Thanksgiving Mass. Following that, the young lady will put on a ball gown and hold a bouquet of her choice of colors. The party resumes in a banquet hall, where there will be dancing, beverages, and food. Different people play different roles in the celebration. Chamberlains are young males that do a birthday dance for the birthday girl. The younger sister or family member is also included in the La Ultima Mua, in which the parents give the birthday girl a doll, which she then passes on to the younger female relative. During this night, the first flower arrangement, or Rameau de Flores, is also given. As a representation of her childhood, the birthday girl will crush 15 piñatas. The singing of the birthday song, Las Mananitas, which relatives sing to the birthday girl as she slices her birthday cake, is the climax of a quinceanera. Dia de los Muertos is a renowned international Mexican tradition. Historians trace the origins of Dia de los Muertos, also known as the Day of the Dead, back to pre-Columbian Mesoamerica. Death was regarded as a natural part of life by the Nahua tribes and the Aztecs, and this belief is still held by many Hispanics today. The Aztecs and Nahua tribes thought that the dead went to Chikunamakshan, where they passed through nine levels until arriving at Mictlan, their final resting place. They would leave food, water, and tools for their deceased loved ones to help them on the tough journey to Mictlan. Spain observes the same custom on All Souls Day. The Spanish would offer wine and bread, known as pan de animas, as well as flowers and candles, to assist the departed in finding their journey home. The Spaniards took this practice to the New World, fusing the two. During the Day of the Dead, Mexicans make offerings to the dead on ofrendas. They think that on this day, spirits and the living can converse, and that the deceased are treated as honored guests in the physical world. 
An intriguing fact about the Day of the Dead is that José Guadalupe Posada's Hispanic cultural art named La Calavera Catrina, translated as the elegant skull, helped make the holiday more famous to outsiders. During the celebration, people would wear skull masks and consume skull-shaped candies. In contrast to other funeral rites, Day of the Dead is a joyful festival in which travelers can join respectfully. Originally, piñatas signified Satan. Piñatas are a cultural emblem in Hispanic countries. They can be found during their festivities such as birthdays and las posadas. They come in a variety of colors and shapes, and they may be customized to make them more visually appealing. Piñatas are typically composed of breakable but sturdy materials such as clay, cardboard, and a variety of other materials. While piñatas based on cartoon characters such as SpongeBob or Peppa Pig are now widespread, Hispanics originally had the piñata in the shape of a circle with seven spikes poking out of it. Even before the Spaniards arrived, the Aztecs used piñatas. The tribe members would stuff feathers, candies, and other goodies inside a clay pot, which they would destroy with a stick. After seeing parallels with the Aztecs, Spaniards chose to incorporate Roman Catholic influences into their practice. With seven points, the Spaniards transformed the clay pot into a star. Each point represents one of the seven deadly sins. Lust, gluttony, envy, wrath, pride, sloth, and greed. The circle in the center represents Satan, while the sweets inside represent Satan's temptations. The Aztecs were told by Spaniards that blindfolding oneself while attempting to shatter the piñata represented entire faith in God and the morality he taught us. Los Mariachis is a path to the heart of the Hispanic. Los Mariachis are a group of musicians who perform songs and play music in front of an audience. They are also known as mariachi bands and are mainly made up of musicians who play stringed instruments. Until 1852, Los Mariachis were an all-male group who wore traje de charro. Women in general are now included in modern Los Mariachis. Male members are customarily dressed in traje de charro. Short coats, exaggerated bows, sombreros, and tights make up this ensemble. Female Los Mariachis members began wearing China Poblana, an alternate variation of the traje de charro, by 1852. During important milestones in their lives, Mexicans always require the services of a mariachi band. Weddings, courtships, and birthdays are all accompanied by the tunes of a mariachi band. They are most recognized for their functions in courting. Mariachi bands have been known to serenade females on their behalf. Men and women are strictly separated in Mexican culture. Many young males engage a mariachi band to play the serenata to express their sentiments. A serenata, also known as a serenade, is a tender love song for the young lady to hear. Serenading was never considered a sin by the Mexican elders. It is still a popular approach to express one's feelings to another person nowadays. Semana Santa is a significant religious event. Spain is a deeply religious nation. That is why religion plays a role in most Hispanic culture. Semana Santa, often known as Holy Week, is one of the most important events of the year. Since the 16th century, Hispanics have observed Semana Santa. Every year, the Catholic Church would organize processions depicting Christ's passion. Spain observes Semana Santa with cofradías, Catholic brotherhoods, that wander about the city performing penances. The parades are the main attraction during these events. Nazarenos, also known as penitents, would march while wearing white robes with pointed caps and carrying the cross. There would also be statues, known as bultos, depicting Christ's passion at each step. Semana Santa also includes parades in which men, women, and children all take part. El Salvador, Colombia, and Mexico are among the Hispanic countries that observe Semana Santa in their own unique ways. Semana Santa is celebrated in Mexico with live reenactments. Some participants in the Taxco province are even whipping themselves and carrying thorns. Colombians utilize foods to commemorate Semana Santa. They'd consume tortoises, crocodiles, and iguanas in strange recipes. Hispanic people share common ideals. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, of the United States published a study on how Hispanic patients react to doctors. It examines health issues affecting Hispanic people in relation to their cultures. According to the research article, Hispanic families have a collectivistic culture. Collectivistic culture occurs when huge groups share tasks, meet on a regular basis, and are fiercely committed to one another. Hispanic families value their elders and regard the eldest male in the family as the family leader. However, in certain families, the eldest female is the family leader. 
These women are typically grandmothers. Hispanics live longer lives is a result of their collectivistic society. This is due to the fact that the entire family looks after their elders. This makes it easier to detect problems in the elderly and treat them before it's too late. Furthermore, due of their family ideals, Hispanic couples produce more children. As a result, Hispanic families outnumber white families. Hispanic and Latino people should not be mixed together. People from all around the world interchangeably use the terms Hispanic and Latin. It's only natural given that the majority of Latinos are Hispanic. The truth is that Hispanic is a term used to describe people from Spanish-speaking countries. Meanwhile, Latino culture may be traced back to Latin American territories. As a result, Brazilians who speak Portuguese are not Hispanic. They are, however, located within Latin American territory, making them Latin. You may also add that Spain is a Hispanic country, but Spanish people are not Latino. There is some disagreement on whether the Philippines is a Hispanic country. Many individuals are curious about the countries of Hispanic origin. Individuals gain a better understanding of the prerequisites to become Hispanic. The first requirement is that the Spanish race conquered the country and altered their language. The second condition is that the people be able to communicate in Hispanic languages, meaning their language is Spanish with a mixture of their own language. Finally, they must have assimilated Hispanic cultural ideals while under Spanish hegemony. From this data, you may determine which countries are Hispanic. The first question is answered. Are Spaniards Hispanic? With these conditions, the Spanish are a part of the Hispanic community. This also implies that the Portuguese are not Hispanic. This is due to the fact that Portuguese is not a Spanish language. What about the Philippines, for example? For 300 years, Spain ruled the Philippines. However, after the Americans assumed control of the Philippines, English took over as the country's second language. Filipino languages, like Portuguese, have mingled Spanish terminology, but the majority of them remain their own language. People argue about whether Filipinos are Hispanic due to the influence of Spain on them. Like in other Hispanic countries, Spaniards converted Filipinos and transformed their language and culture. Filipinos also learned Spanish until the 1970s. Initially, this qualifies them for Hispanic ethnicity. However, according to the U.S. Census, Hispanics are persons from Spanish-speaking countries. Filipinos' eligibility is being called into doubt since that they no longer speak Spanish. Carnivals are the last time they have fun before Lent begins. For generations, Hispanics and Latin Americans have enjoyed carnivals. These are festivities held the day before Ash Wednesday when individuals can enjoy themselves as much as they wish before the start of Lent. Carnivals, also known as carnavals, originated in Italy. The term carnival implies a due to flesh. This is because Roman Catholics refrain from eating red meat from Ash Wednesday through Easter. The French and Spanish adopted the custom and spread it to their colonies, eventually making it a Hispanic and Latin custom as well. Carnivals can be found in many countries. Even the state of Louisiana has them. The most well-known carnival, however, is Mardi Gras in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Noche Buena is a celebration of Hispanic families. Noche Buena, which translates as good night, refers to the Hispanic holiday celebrated on December 24. The purpose of Noche Buena is to bring together friends and family to commemorate the birth of Jesus Christ. Noche Buena is considered by Hispanic countries to be a more authentic celebration of Christ's birth than December 25. Many Hispanics prepare enormous dinners on Christmas Eve while the rest of the family and friends drink, eat, dance, and play games. Some Hispanics also attend La Misa del Gallo, or the Midnight Mass preceding Noche Buena. The cuisine of Noche Buena differs according to the country of origin. Noche Buena is celebrated in Cuba with lechon, or roasted pig. Mexicans, on the other hand, have turkey, beef, tamales, and pozole, a traditional stew. Hispanic culture places a high value on siestas. Siesta, not to be confused with fiesta, is a Spanish phrase for after lunch break. The name itself is derived from the Latin words sexta, sixth, and hora, hour. The sixth hour would be shortly before six o'clock in the afternoon. While it is not always done at the same time, people normally take their siestas after lunch. Major cities in Spain no longer observe siesta as closely as they once did. However, the municipality of Ador maintains the tradition on a regular basis. This means that no businesses in Ador will be open between 2 and 5 p.m. Large corporations in Spain used to use siestas and have their employees work until 8 p.m. Siestas were widely used in Latin American countries. 
This is because, prior to the introduction of air conditioning, siestas were taken during the hottest hours of the day. Employees were able to take a break from the heat instead of sweating or fainting. Nowadays, most people do not take siestas. However, Spaniards still practice and partake in siestas on occasion. Those who do discover their company allowing them siestas would more likely stay awake and accomplish something different. Hispanic culture is rife with superstitions. Hispanics have passed down distinct rules from generation to generation. They would advise their children from doing things in fear that it could cause damage to them or everyone else. Grandmothers, in particular, would caution their grandkids about the dangers of doing something that appears to be typical. Most Hispanics, even as adults, practice these superstitions out of habit and fear. It is unknown where the superstitions originated. Folklore, anecdotes from a distant relative's experience, or even something their grandmother thought to be genuine can all be traced back to Hispanic families. We all believed in Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy, and the Easter Bunny as children. We gradually learn, however, that they do not exist. Hispanic adults never grow out of these superstitions. Adults would feel that whether they practice them or not, they are either defying and causing disrespect, having benefits, or believe in superstition. Placing your purse on the floor is one of these superstitions. Hispanic elders think that leaving your bag on the floor would result in financial loss. Furthermore, placing your luggage on the floor may allow dirt to adhere to it, making it easier to just place it on a chair or table. Elders advise against sweeping on an unmarried woman's feet as well. This is because Hispanics think that if you do so, the single woman will no longer be married. Sweeping above a person's feet is considered disrespectful in terms of manners. Giving scissors or knives to a family or couple is our final example. Elders believe that this will be the end of their partnership. Knives and scissors, on the other hand, can be a deadly gift if small children play with them. Hispanic culture is not obsessed with punctuality. Hispanic families are less organized than other cultures. While the majority of people will be on time for crucial meetings, Hispanic countries consider being 10 to 30 minutes late to be acceptable. Being late by up to 30 minutes from the scheduled time is considered timely. This is true for family gatherings, social trips, and even work meetings. Hispanic people, unlike Americans, do not set an end of the world date. This means that, depending on the topic of discussion, a meeting could run longer than an hour or two. While they may be late for the stated time, they may also end with an undetermined time span. Elders must be respected in Hispanic culture. In contrast to Americans, Hispanic culture places a high value on authority. Hispanics practice respecto, which is a custom of showing respect to strangers and seniors. This means that if you encounter someone who is older than you or has a better level of education, you must address them as senor, senora, don, or dona. Elders are held in the utmost regard by Hispanics. The eldest child, usually the eldest male, would come after the grandparents. When most Hispanic families are at a loss for what to do, they turn to the eldest male. As a result, the family's schools, financial ambitions, and medical treatments are all approved by the eldest man. However, in today's Hispanic homes, gender is no longer a factor in determining power. Young Hispanics learn not to be disrespectful to their elders. Because they are the youngest, they are rarely given significant tasks. As they grow older, the children learn how to care for the family and take on new tasks. When they became seniors, these children would pass on what they had learned to the following generation. Encanto is a film about Hispanic culture. Encanto, a Disney film, does an excellent job of exploring Hispanic culture. It is set in Colombia and depicts the various hardships that each family member faces. The characters, like other Hispanic families, reside in a large house together. Mirabel's grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins all live together and each have a particular role. Their abuela, or grandmother, is the family's strict leader. Encanto also includes many Hispanic objects and practices. Traditional Colombian attire for both sexes is one example. Females would wear la polera colora, which consists of a brightly colored skirt, a round neck top, and matching shoes. The film also includes references to Hispanic-influenced foods, such as the arepa, which is enjoyed by the main character, Mirabel. In addition, Disney depicts the traditional process of courtship in Hispanic households. Throughout the film, Mariano pursues Isabella, the family's eldest daughter. When the two were interacting, Abuela Madrigal and Mariano's mother were always present. Young guys and females interacting alone is frowned upon in Hispanic society. 
As a result, Mariano proposes to Isabella in front of their respective families. Hispanic culture is incredibly welcoming. You won't find more welcoming family than Hispanic families. It is customary in Hispanic culture to greet friends and acquaintances with wide arms rather than with distance. Hispanic families make certain that their guests are well-fed and amused. People with Hispanic ancestry are inherently joyful. This is because Hispanic culture teaches us to congregate in large groups, throw parties, and celebrate a variety of events. Anyone who has been exposed to Hispanic culture is accustomed to cheerful celebrations and finds the small things worth celebrating. Telenovelas are an important aspect of Hispanic culture. Telenovelas are an important aspect of Hispanic culture. Unfortunately, they are criticized for their very twisted narratives, overdone acting, and absurd production qualities. It's not uncommon to come across jokes based on telenovelas. Nonetheless, despite these complaints, Hispanics love watching them for two reasons. The primary factor is communication. Love and vengeance are common themes in telenovelas. You might think the shows are cringe-worthy at first. However, the more you watch telenovelas, the more interested you become in how the characters will handle their problems. Many Hispanics like debating various hypotheses about the outcome. As a result, telenovelas have become a topic of conversation among friends and even strangers. Furthermore, Hispanic people identify with the characters. Many telenovelas are on the problems of women, men, and children. Each telenovela's characters all have a significant point to which Hispanics and telenovela lovers can relate. This makes it easy for them to root for their favorite character and connect with others who relate to the same character. Godparents are appointed to married couples. You do not have to look for godparents for newborns on your own. In Hispanic culture, married couples are also looking for godparents. In Hispanic culture, godparents are referred to as madrinas and padrinos. These godparents pay for the couple's wedding expenditures and even provide counsel during their marriage. The godparents traditionally take part in the wedding ceremony. Madrinas and padrinos would assist the couple with the wedding veil, bouquet, and coins during the lasso event. The couple, the Virgin Mary, and the priest are also given presents by the godparents. Cinco de Mayo celebrates Mexican victories over the French troops, not their independence. Cinco de Mayo, or May 5th, is an annual celebration in Mexico. Mexicans commemorate the Battle of Puebla to commemorate their amazing victory over the French on May 5, 1862. Contrary to common misconception, Cinco de Mayo does not commemorate Mexico's independence. The conflict pitted Mexico's President Benito Juárez against French President Napoleon III. Cinco de Mayo is typically observed in two places. The first destination is Puebla, Mexico, which is where the combat and celebration began. The second place would be in North America, where Mexican-Americans would organize enormous celebrations. The victory in the conflict improved the morale of many Mexicans. Unfortunately, Napoleon III won the war and installed Maximilian I as Emperor of Mexico. In 1867, Mexico regains its independence. Mexicans are fiercely protective of Our Lady of Guadalupe. The Virgin of Guadalupe, often known as Our Lady of Guadalupe, is Mexico's patroness. Saint Juan Diego, an Aztec convert to Christianity, witnessed Mary's apparition twice in 1531, on December 9 and 12. Mary orders Juan Diego to construct a shrine for her on Tepeyac Hill. Juan informs the bishop, who demands that Mary provide him another proof that this is her wish. Juan sees Mary again, and she orders him to collect roses and deliver them to the bishop when they meet again. When the bishop and Juan met, Juan unbuttoned his cloak to reveal Mary's image imprinted on the cloak. This image is currently revered in the Basilica of Guadalupe. Our Lady of Guadalupe was a symbol of peace and love for Mexicans. An outbreak of hemorrhagic fever ravaged Mexico's people and economy from 1736 to 1737. Citizens who prayed to Our Lady of Guadalupe felt she had pity on him and had eliminated the endemic. She is also regarded as the icon that inspired Mexicans to fight for their freedom. The first person to utilize her image in the name of Mexico was Miguel Hidalgo y Costilla. Before fighting the Spanish in 1810, Costilla and his troops chanted, Long live Our Lady of Guadalupe. During the insurrection, Emilio Zapata's gang also utilized her image. Because of her long-standing association with Mexico, many Mexicans fiercely defend her dignity and image. It doesn't really matter if they are aware of what she has done for them in the past. Their devotion to the Virgin of Guadalupe is a natural instinct that most of them rapidly overcome. 
Colombia's Festival of the Flowers has gained international acclaim. Colombia's Festival of the Flowers, commonly known as Silateros, is popular among both visitors and residents. Every year, an estimated 26,000 visitors go to Medellin, the festival's host city, to admire the floral arrangements distributed throughout the windows, streets, balconies, and parades. Medellin, the capital city of Antioquia, is the world's second largest exporter of flowers. Orchids are the most common flower exported from Medellin. As a result, travelers come to Santa Elena, the location of the festival's wildflowers. In 1957, Arturo Uribe conceived the Festival of Flowers as a way to honor the country's flower industry. He specifically invited Santa Elena's gardeners to participate. The first few events consisted of a single flower exposition, procession, pageant, and musical concert. Nowadays, the Festival of the Flowers incorporates concerts by famous Colombians, an orchid expo, the Ritmo de Bicicleta, which sees everyone riding bikes around the city, fireworks, parades, classic vehicles, cookery instruction, horses, and art exhibitions. The Argentine tango is a cultural melting pot. Hispanic culture is typically influenced not only by Spanish, but also by French, Dutch, and Africans. The Argentine tango is a great illustration of the blending that can place. Professional dancers say that the Argentine tango is a dance that is exclusively about the closeness of two individuals. This indicates that the dance can only move when it includes the heart rather than the motions of the couple. The Argentine tango, unlike other dances, can only be successful if you have a genuine connection with your partner. Argentina, Montevideo, Buenos Aires, and Uruguay all have a stake in the origin of the dance. It was influenced by African dances such as candom, waltz, and polka dance, as well as Cuban dances such as habanera. Former slaves, lower to middle class families, and immigrants performed the Argentine tango exclusively in its early years. The dance became a sort of connection to the motherland, allowing those who felt lost in their new nation to interact with those who shared their heritage. Argentine tango dancing was originally forbidden in Argentina due to a series of dictatorships. Performers secretly continued to dance the Argentine tango. Only in the 1980s were dances legally permitted to perform the Argentine tango again. There was a period when Americans were anxious for Mexicans to come to America. We are all aware of the long-standing restrictions in entering the United States. Immigrants of Hispanic and Caucasian descent to North America remain a contentious issue. However, there was a time when the tables were turned. In 1941, the United States revised its policies and behavior toward Mexicans. War is costly, and the labor force in the United States was depleted as a result of men leaving for the war. Farmers in the United States sought assistance and pleaded with the government to recruit workers ready to work for cheap pay. As a response, the United States and Mexico established the Bracero, or laborer program. The United States marketed this initiative as an incentive for Mexican people to cross the border and earn money. Although the pay and living conditions were deplorable, many Mexicans agreed to the deal. Abuse was also common, with the government refusing to allow Mexican laborers to enter Texas due to the state's constant allegations of harassment. The initiative ran past its original deadline in 1964, contributing to Mexico's influence in the United States. The terms Latin and Hispanic have diverse connotations. The term Hispanic was coined by the United States government to refer to Spanish-speaking countries. We now understand that someone can be Latin but not Hispanic, and vice versa. But did you realize that the words came from different countries and had different meanings? In 10 BC, the Italic tribal group Latini near Latium coined the term, Latin. The Latini tribe spoke a language known as Latin. European countries such as Spain, Portugal, France, Italy, and Romania used the Latin language to develop their own, becoming inextricably linked with it. When Napoleon III of France attempted to subjugate the Latin American republics, he referred to the region as Latin America. The emperor and his council reasoned that by referring to the locals as Latin Americans, they would feel more at ease. The term Hispanic originates in the Latin language. It was derived from the word Hispanicus. Hispanicus was the name given to individuals from the Iberian Peninsula by the ancient Romans. In the United States, the term evolved throughout the 19th century. People with Spanish ancestry who arrived before the annexation were now referred to as Hispanos by Americans. Pachucos contributed to the development of Mexican-American culture. A Pachuco was a Mexican-Hispanic kid who lived from the late 1800s to the early 1900s. Male Pachucos were easy to detect at the time because of their favored attire, zoot suits. 
Females, known as pachucas, wore platform shoes and styled their hair in a pompadour. The pachuco subculture was a protest against total absorption into American society. They instead merged Mexican and American customs. They even had their own language, which they named, Calo. Unfortunately, many pachucos were regarded as gang members. Along with their activities, the Calo language made him appear suspect. Police uncovered a few members of the Pachuco subculture engaging in illegal crimes such as drug trafficking and murder. As a result, racists believed that all Pachucos and Pachucas were members of a gang with ill intents. As a result, white people loathed anyone who was Mexican or Hispanic. Until World War II, the United States didn't give it any thought. To use all materials for funding the war, the government forbade the manufacturing of zoot suits. Pachucos, on the other hand, was able to obtain new suits through black markets. The government and its military forces were enraged by this. Physical harassment, illegal detention, and even kidnapping of zoot suit wearers. Physical retaliation kicked off the zoot suit riots. The media then discussed the violence that Pachucos were capable of. They were unfairly depicted as stubborn insurgents engaged in criminal acts. The Chicano movement emerged in the 1960s. The Zoot Suit Riots sparked the Chicano movement, which laid the framework for equal rights for Mexican Americans. Since then, Zoot Suits and the Pachuco subculture of resisting American domination have been adapted into activism. Funeral customs differ in Puerto Rico, Cuba, and the Dominican Republic. Within Hispanic culture, there are alternative funeral practices. The majority of people are only familiar with the Day of the Dead. Puerto Rico, Cuba, and the Dominican Republic, on the other hand, have distinct cultural ways. Standing funerals are common in Puerto Rico. In their culture, the departed are often depicted in positions similar to those they held during their lives. This tradition differs from normal funeral procedures in which the deceased are laid down to simulate sleeping. Instead, they celebrate and appreciate the way their loved ones chose to live by placing their bodies in the same positions they always did. Posing the deceased loved one as if they were playing computer games, snapping pictures, or riding motorcycles is an example of a standing ritual. The Cuban funeral custom is very distinctive. Cubans bury their dead within 24 hours of death. During those 24 hours, the children of the deceased will hover over the corpse to represent caring for the body. The Dominican Republic also has a distinct funeral custom. Dominicans will be in mourning for nine days. These nine days are divided into three. The first set would be used to lament, the second for stillness, and the third for acceptance. This lengthy wake is thought to have African origins. The Santeria faith originated in Cuba. Santeria is a religion with many different names. It is also known as the Osha rule, La Regla Lucum, and the Way of the Saints. Santeria was created by fusing two religions in Cuba. Yoruba, an African religion, would be the first. The second religion is Christianity, which originated in Spain. Many Hispanic countries have started to practice the faith. Brazil and Panama are two examples of these countries. Santeria is a religion that worships Orishas, or saints. They believe that God has created every one of us with a unique purpose. Santerian believers would need to perform ceremonies such as animal sacrifice to demonstrate their devotion and communicate with the Orishas. The Santeria religion is based on the teachings of Jesus Christ. They do, however, refer to Christ as a low fee. The Santeria religion has a counterpart to the Virgin Mary. Santeria practitioners refer to her as Arisha, Arisa, or Umeya. In addition to animal sacrifices, Santeria offers rites that allow practitioners to communicate with the Arishas. They drum, dance, eat, and have actual discussions with their Arishas. Despite having a large number of followers, their religion does not have many religious structures. Hispanic Americans and Hispanics from their homeland have different cultures. Arguments between Americanized Hispanics and their local relatives are typical upon returning to the country. This is related to the Hispanic definition. Hispanic refers to people who are descended from a Spanish-speaking country. Hispanic Americans, on the other hand, are people of Hispanic descent who have settled in the United States. This means that people of Hispanic origin and their Americanized relatives have different and similar values and traditions that clash. Children of Hispanic American descent are known to travel to their country during the summer if their families can afford it. Whether these children have been visiting since they were children or have only recently returned to their birthplace, cultural differences are frequently the source of conflict. 
Hispanic American families that have assimilated to American culture may be perplexed by the traditions that their relatives observe. The Puerto Rican superstition of Sereno is one example of this. Concerned relatives will insist that children and infants be shielded from an evening breeze that can cause illness. This may seem ludicrous to Hispanic Americans, particularly those living in colder parts of the country. Hispanic Americans in states such as New York may find the Puerto Rican weather too humid to wear clothing. Locals would regard their Americanized kin to be disrespectful as a result of the lack of communication. For Hispanic Heritage Month, the United States of America prioritizes Hispanic people. One of the many interesting facts about Hispanic Heritage Month is that it began as Hispanic Heritage Week. In 1968, President Lyndon B. Johnson created Hispanic Heritage Week. President Ronald Reagan extends the event to 30 days 20 years later. Finally, on September 15, 1989, President George H. W. Bush declared Hispanic Heritage Month to endure 31 days, from September 15 to October 15. For the past 40 years, Hispanic Americans have celebrated Hispanic culture on these days. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our channel, since we will be covering a lot of similar content in the future. Till next time, stay curious.